Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Coco Bandicoot here, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of WarioWare Move It for the Nintendo Switch. So, last time we did somehow tackle through two stages in particular, which there are Young Cricket and Master Mantis, or to be more specifically, Cricket and Mantis, and on top of that, we also did manage to went into Jimmy T stage as well. Although I will admit though, we actually did the forms of Cricket and Mantis stage no problem, especially concerning not only for its score department, but it's also about the fact that yes indeed, we did somehow unlock every single micro games on that stage, and on top of that, when it comes to Jimmy T stage as far as I'm concerned, for the most part it's fine, except the boss micro game is not only is incredibly slow, but is also extremely boring as well, which gee, no wonder why a lot of people seem to really dislike that particular boss micro game as far as that particular part itself is concerned, because, well, I just don't understand why they somehow choose that particular boss micro game to begin with for Jimmy T, but oh well, whatever. So today for this video is about the fact that we're going to be continuing things on throughout the forms of story mode and this time we're going into dribble and spits. So as you can see, not only are we can able to actually do multi forms, so meaning about the fact that we can stumble across into the exact same forms as the previous stages, but there was actually a new addition on this and that's what appears to be these buttons. So well, something tells me about the fact that when it comes to certain micro games in that particular stage, we're going to be doing with the combination of multi forms as well as buttons. So this will be interesting. So without further ado, let's dive right into Dribble and Spits. Making waves. <sighs> this is the life. Dribble, my friend. Wake up, buddy. We've got trouble. <laughs> Look at where we are. Great. With this final entry, we're ready to race. How we even get in here? And now, the Cares Away Grand Prix is about to begin. I, I guess we're racing now. I'm on it! Three! Okay then, so it looks like we're about to be participating in a race out of nowhere, thanks to the forms of dribbles sleeping and stuff like that. But either way, let's get this entire stage started. Button sign. When this glyph appears, press buttons on your form stone. The form stone has many buttons. Which of them should you press? Only your heart can tell you that. So similar to the forms of how it does it in Trust Tether Sign, in Journey forms of in Dr. Crygor, Penny, and Mike stage, if you see that particular icon as you see before the actual micro game starts, obviously though it's recommendable in case if you really want able to succeed the actual micro game. Like for instance, we need to press one of those four face buttons. It doesn't really matter what uh, joy cons you're going to be using. So as a result, no matter what though, it is another example about the fact that we need to press the L and R buttons on these uh, Joy-Con controllers respectively, so you can able to actually count how many of those specific creatures they have shown us. So, yeah, that's as far as I can try to able to expect to know how this stage actually plays out to be. And something tells me is about the fact that the next stage coming up is going to be most likely uh, also multi-form, as well as buttons as well. So, about to be speaking, I was about the fact that then again, we'll talk more about that if we continue proceeding for this whole entire stage. So, anyways, though, Though. A few things I want to talk about is, is about the fact that, well, today's day is of course there is the, uh, the 20th of July today, in some cases in 2024 today. So relatively speaking, though, we've only got about exactly six days left now until the Paris Olympics 2024 is about to start. So relatively speaking, though, is about the fact that I'm still basically excited, able to see it on live. 
on TV, especially concerning for the fact it's, you know, technically it's been uh, three years ago since, uh, you know, Tokyo 2021. So relatively speaking, I was about the fact I'm still looking forward to seeing of how the Olympic Stadium is actually going to look like on the actual Paris Olympics itself. So either way, and um, in addition to that, I've also realized about something is about the fact that recently, though, that Inside Out 2, when it comes to the review scores in Rotten Tomato, has slightly increased by one point. And as a result so far, that Inside Out 2 has now recently received uh, 91% in uh, Tomato uh, Meter on uh, Rotten Tomatoes website, which is actually a good thing, especially because concerning for the fact that I still have no idea when does the film will be able to actually deserve to have the DVD and Blu-ray physical release. Maybe we'll find out more about it during at some point in possibly until likely in September or something. We'll mind you about the fact it has been about quite a few uh, hours since we actually mentioned something related to Inside Out 2. Ever since about the fact that as far as I'm aware that uh, Inside Out 2 has now beaten the Super Mario Bros. movie when it comes to the forms of the animated box office department. So anyway. And now, folks, we come to the forms of the boss micro game in Dribble and Spit stage. And I will admit, though, this particular boss micro game is actually pretty fun. Basically, though, it's about the fact that we need to perform the massage alongside with the forms of the buttons as well. Or to be more specifically, just try to utilize with massage with buttons combined. So, basically, though, in order to able to shoot the actual projectiles, you have to press the L and R buttons in a corresponding Joy Con controllers. And basically, though, you just have to keep on shooting and able to try to defeat the main threat in this particular boss micro game. Once you've done so, well, that was it. So, I will say for this point, I actually had a lot of fun with this boss micro game. It's definitely a little bit more better than that boring uh, Jimmy T boss micro game, but that's just me. Well, despite the fact that you haven't exactly went into the finish line, unlike that unexpected hippo, with that particular flotation, so yeah, that was very unexpected. I'm guessing the seagull must have screwed up with that particular direction. So anyway, let's see how many micro games we are currently missing on in terms of dribble and spits. So once again, we are missing six micro games. So hopefully though, I should be able to try to able to unlock every single remaining micro games if possible. Unlike the forms of how it does on the previous stages, like for instance with Mona, as well as the forms of uh, Orbilon, Katanana, and uh, Jimmy T. So uh, we shall see what happens in doing that specific uh, run anyway. And as far as I do notice, that the next stage we're going to be jumping right into is the one and only Ninefold. However, we'll save him for later, which trust me while I'm saying this, I'm going to be extremely excited able to actually go into uh, Ninefold stage coming up, because as far as I'm aware, they'll try to able to actually bring in Nintendo Classics lineup, which as a result, like I said before, I'm going to be super hyped about this, especially because I'm very curious to know what these specific micro games they'll bring for that particular stage coming up. So anyway, time for the second run on Dribble and Spits, and hopefully we should be able to actually get ourselves some pretty good score results, and on top of that, you know, encountering some missing uh, micro games in general. So hopefully, hope for the best, and uh, wish me luck, I guess. So anyway, so uh, there's also another thing I wanted to mention about this in regards to the forms of what has been happening recently. Well, unexpectedly, is about the fact that we're able to expect to see the new version update for Splatoon 3. And as a result, no matter what though, that particular update is now on to version 8.1.0. I'm not exactly sure what the full description for this though, especially concerning for the fact it has been about quite a few uh, years 
since I actually have last played Splatoon 3. But that's just clearly because, well, for instance, I'm still busy playing through this at, at this point in time right now. In addition to that, though, is about the fact that we are still busy playing through ourselves. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, just for the sake of trying to able to practice the whole entire game before he decided to do the entire Let's Play of Luigi's Mansion 2 at long last, after several years that we originally decided able to do it on the original hardware, which is of course the 3DS, but of course, no matter what though, that didn't go too well at the end, mainly because no matter what though, it does manage to acquire us to able to actually get the 3DS capture device, which we were expecting to try to do that, but of course that's not going to happen, so oh well, no big deal, especially because, well, at this point in time, we've got so many Nintendo Switch games to cover in the future, so not all of them per se, but that's just clear because no matter what though, is about the fact that it'll just takes a bit of time, not only to able to release certain games as far as I'm concerned, but it's also about the fact that we can able to expect able to have a lot of fun times experiencing some brand new Mario games in the future. To be more specifically with the last batch of Switch games coming up for, you know, uh, the second half of this year in particular for 2024. And on top of all that stuff though, I'm super curious to know of what brand new, uh, bigger first party titles they were able to get revealed for the next Nintendo system eventually until next year. So either way though, but uh, then again, though, we still have no idea what the next Nintendo system is going to be called exactly. But then again, though, we'll have to wait and find out in during that some point and by the end of this year, or specifically in 2025 throughout the majority of that specific year. So anyway, uh, there's also another thing I want to explain about in regards to the forms of Splatoon 3. It looks like we're about to be getting a yet another Splatfest at some point until next month in August, and this time what appears to be based off from food related. So, for instance, they somehow mentioned bread, rice, and pasta. So, as a result, I'm very curious to know of who's gonna win that particular catalog as far as that particular Splatfest, as far as this is concerned. Oh, and speaking of food related, I do somehow realize about this, is that for those of you who lived in the UK, apparently though, McDonald's is going to be celebrating its uh, 50 years when it comes to the forms of McDonald's in UK, which I'm not exactly sure how to explain about this, I have to be quite frank, especially because it has been about quite a few uh, months ago since I actually have last experienced McDonald's since, uh, I would say since in March, if it's possibility, but regardless of anything else though, I'm pretty much still more accustomed to able to actually eating some healthy food. Like for instance, cucumber, alongside with the forms of uh, multicolored peppers, in between red, orange, yellow, and green. And on top of that, with onions as well, despite the fact that they are pretty smelly as to be expected. Especially concerning for the fact that, gee, no wonder why. That Wario just keeps on eating garlic all of a sudden, which is pretty unexpected. Well, to be fair though, because of how in fact they during the course have been, uh, you know what I'm talking about, in Wario Land The Shake Dimension, or specifically Wario Land Shake It, if you manage to able to obtain a garlic, it actually restores your health if you do manage to able to pick up the garlic in that particular game. So, anyways though, uh, there's also another thing I want to mention about this in regards to the forms of what has been happening as well, is that well, unexpectedly, about the fact that it looks like that Sonic Racing game that, you know, with that game is only exclusive to Apple Arcade for some time ago. Well, apparently, though, they're going to be bringing ourselves some new um, updates, or to be more specifically, some new content, which we do have. Take to the finish line with a new racer, which appears to be a cosmetic character. That's what appears to be Rockstar Rouge. And on top of that, experience new time trials. And on top of that, competes to be number one in weekly leaderboards. So, yeah, that's as far as I can try to able to explain about the forms of that particular most recent update. In regards to the forms of Sonic Racing game on Apple Arcade. Although, the only, the most unfortunate thing, as far as I did somehow discover recently. Unfortunately, though, I can never able to actually go back onto Sonic Dash recently. Because every time whenever I do manage to load that game up. And basically, though, what happens was... The load times refuse to load up, and as a result, it won't allow me to able to jump right in, uh, jump right back into the game. So no matter what, though, it's about the fact that I'm gonna have to wait. 
for a while until the actual game decides to load properly again. So that's a bit unfortunate. And speaking of something unfortunate though, we somehow managed able to come across into our second run over. So as a result, let's see how well we did in terms of micro games. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! I was off by one micro game again! Oh my god. Days. This is going to get a little bit more frustrating as far as this is concerned. In regards to the forms we're trying to able to get um, every single micro games on this whole entire process as far as this entire thing goes. Uh, oh well, I suppose I'll be back for that later on, I guess. But on the positive side of things though, we can now able to jump right into the best stage in the whole entire game alongside with any other WarriorWare games up to this point. That's of course 9 Vault. And basically, just like the previous uh, WarriorWare games, 9 Vault, 9 Vault stage will involve around your experiencing you know, stuff of micro games based off from Nintendo games, ranging from Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, alongside with Fire Emblem every once in a while, along with all the others. So, except for Pokemon though, because Pokemon has been developed by a different developer, which is of course Game Freak, as you know, but either way, it involves around multi-form, so yeah, I'm very curious to know of what these micro games they'll bring us. Okay, everyone. I'll see you back here at five o'clock sharp. Yo, nine volt. Come on, man. Just gotta save real quick. Good call, but hurry it up. <laughs> Hey guys, where'd you go? Wait a sec, that's 18 volts. He's not in there, is he? Well, it does kind of reminds me of a similar vibes as in Five Nights at Freddy's almost, but either way, so I love the fact that when it comes to Five Vault, did somehow manage to hum into the actual song based off from the Super Mario Bros. Uh, Overworld theme, which is pretty cool and very iconic at the same time. So anyways, let's see what micro games that we will come across. So, oh, this one is based off from Nintendo Dogs Plus Cats, because you know, dogs and cats are included. So, yeah, pretty understandable as far as that particular thing itself is concerned. And this is obviously Mario Bros, because obviously, though, we need to knock that particular uh, show creeper as far as this is concerned. And I do know this one is. This is obviously based off from Animal Crossing, specifically Animal Crossing New Horizons, even though despite the fact that the frame rate looks a bit weird in this game, though. And this one is based off from Pilot Wings, because obviously though with the Super Nintendo sprites, alongside with the forms of these uh, pretty unique visuals like uh, FX and stuff like that. So, anyways, let's go and do Choo Choo, and let's see what we got. Oh, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. It's a good thing we did somehow manage to get ourselves our original cartridge versions of not only Super Mario Bros. 2, as well as Super Mario World, Super uh, Yoshi's Island. So, either way though, I almost said things a little bit more opposite, but either way. So, this is obviously based off from Fire Emblem Engage, which is the most recent Fire Emblem game at the time, even though despite the fact it actually requires uh, hand model, which as a result, sometimes it works and other times not. So anyway, that micro game as we saw earlier, earlier, that's obviously based off from Ring Fit Adventure. Oh, this is unexpected. We actually come across into a micro game based off from Mario Pinball Land. Or specifically, Super Mario Ball, for those of you lived in European countries, including Japan as well. So yeah, that seems very unexpected. And also we've got... Oh, this one is based off from uh, We Play Motion, which is obviously uh, Post Me Plus, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is obviously Dr. Mario, so self-explanatory right there. 
And I will admit to that right away is about the fact that when it comes to the forms of other stuff I would like to discuss. Oh, okay, we actually got ourselves a Paper Mario micro game, which is to be more specifically Paper Mario the Origami King. And this is obviously based off from Super Mario Bros. 3 right here because of the raccoon tail. So yeah, that seems very cool. Oh, this is interesting. This is obviously based off from Metroid Dread. You know, the most recent Metroid game at the time. Well, it wasn't until before uh, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond is about to be approaching until uh, next year, in 2025, for some time. And now we come across into a boss micro game in 9 volt stage, and this is obviously based off from Super Mario 64 DS, where basically though we have to go through a serious amount of uh, slides and all that stuff, however if you do fall off then obviously you have to try again. So, as far as I'm aware, this particular stage is obviously based off from Princess Peach's uh, castle slide, which is pretty much the, uh, the easiest. Uh, sliding segments in uh, Super Mario 64 alongside with Super Mario 64 DS as well, so yeah. And much like in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, is that Mario's voice sounds a lot different, which, like in that game though, he's been voiced by Kevin by the way. Welcome to my shop. Look at all these video games! Are you gonna buy anything or just... By the way, I love the fact that with that particular bear character, that he almost dressed up as Mario, except the fact that he doesn't have his mustache on, but either way. So, before we get onto the forms of the second run in 9 Vault Stage, let me double check on how many micro games we are missing, and once again we are missing 6. So, either way though, and suffice to say, we somehow unlocked the next stage, which apparently though we're about to be going on to the next tourist bus again. So relatively speaking, I was about the fact that my guess is about the fact that we're about to jump into our Remix 2 level, which, that again though, we'll save that particular stage and join at some point until tomorrow, because like I said before, we're about to be going on to the second run of 9 volt stage. So either way, um, there's also another thing I want to mention about in regards to the forms of what's been happening as well, and that's, suffice to say, there's quite a lot of those anniversaries when it comes to the forms of those Pokemon animated movies, which, so far, I did somehow manage to have found uh, four of those Pokemon movies has recently celebrated its anniversary department, and, uh, oh, I completely forgot to mention about the fifth Pokemon movie has also managed to celebrate its anniversary as well, and that's what appears to be by the forms of Pokemon the movie, The Power of One, or to be more specifically, in the, uh, the English version, and that's what appears to be Pokemon the Movie 2000. Well, then again though, I suppose we should probably save that particular topic and during at some point until probably until tomorrow, or perhaps even maybe later on today. So, either way though, um, yeah, as you can tell, we did somehow come across into yet another micro games we've already did somehow experience, and that's what appears to be The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, just because of the forms of the updated graphics, and suffice to say, we get chased by the forms of uh, young, young Link, so yeah, that seems very uh, bizarre, especially that we somehow become a uh, cuckoo after all. So yeah, that's actually pretty uh, unexpected indeed, especially concerning for the fact that we somehow managed able to learn, uh, you know, the form of Bagar to begin with. So anyways though, let's just go ahead and wear the ring and- Oh, come on! Really? Uh, oh well, I suppose we should probably get our extra life back if we somehow made our way to uh, level 2 variant of this particular stage. So, anyways, let's see what Pounds is all about. And this is obviously based off on those, uh, well, let's just say the NES uh, shooting games as far as I'm usually trying to describe it. So, anyway, and we're going back into uh, Mario Pinball Land and basically we're about to take down this particular, you know, Piranha Plant boss, and I think that was actually in the, uh, the world, which appears to be, uh, oh, we're gonna be doing some live stacking where it comes to a lot multitude of copies for several of WarriorWare games, which one of those games in particular is WarriorWare Inc. Minigame Mania, 
and this is obviously based off from punch out which funny enough whenever i first uh played this game back in journey forms within 2023 this is the only micro game i somehow missed during the forms of my first playthrough of the uh, nine volt stage so as a result yeah punch out is one of those micro games i did somehow miss during the forms of my first time playing for the game so but either way though but honestly it did took me about a lot multitude of reruns and stuff like that and this micro game is based off from pikmin 2 because obviously though one of those environments it does manage to take place somewhere in journey forms of well it's like a valley of repose i think it's what it says anyway especially because in pikmin 2 you can able to experience in the uh levels based off from seasons so well, mind you, it has been about quite a few years ago since I actually have last played Pikmin 2, since my uh, entire first time experiencing the Switch version of Pikmin 2. Plus, it's mainly because I'm still basically more accustomed to with the Wii Remote, with all its motion controls and all that stuff, with the actual aiming accuracy is a lot more... Uh, fluid and all that stuff but either way so as you can tell uh, as soon as we make our way towards the end of this particular super mario 64 ds boss micro game i love the actual transition when it comes to able to going through uh you know nintendo consoles which is uh the game boy advance on uh, level one in uh super mario 64 ds boss micro game in uh princess peach's castle's slide and as far as I'm aware, whenever we get to level 2, as well as level 3, we might come across into something a little bit more familiar, when it comes to not only for one of those accessories, but it's also another one of those Nintendo systems here and there. So anyways, let's move on to level 2 right now, and we go back onto Nintendogs plus cats. So, well mind you, I haven't exactly experienced that much of the forms of Nintendogs these days. Well mind you, because of how the fact that I haven't exactly got any of those uh, Nintendo Dogs games ever in my life, especially concerning for the fact I've heard it's actually very popular back in the day, especially concerning for the fact that, well, it's basically it's like a pet simulator, so either way though, that's as far as I can try to able to explain it by. So anyways, okay, so let's see what this one is all about. So basically, we do need to find the question mark block somewhere, and straight to the point, we found it. Ultra Machine DX. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, I'm guessing about the fact that I do recognize that particular, uh, the baseball thing from the likes of in, uh, WarriorWare Inc. Minigame Mania for one of those boss micro games in 9 Volt as well. So that's as far as I was expecting, so anyway. Oh jeez, multiple copies of WarriorWare touched on the DS. I mean, what's next? The forms of, uh, you know, WarriorWare Inc. Mega Party games next? Well, I suppose we'll find out if we dive right into level 3 of this stage. So, anyway. So, of course, we meet again with uh, Ring Fit Adventure. So, well, I definitely heard about that game, but, ah, uh, oh, darn it, I messed that up. Oh well. No big deal though, especially concerning for a fact- Oh, you gotta be kidding me. We're going back into this again. There we go! Now we finally managed to put the ring in a finger. So, that should be pretty swell. So, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, do scales right here. And, basically, we're going back onto Wii Play Motion again. So, uh, but this time going for those two of those specific gates right there. Alright, lifter, let's see what we got. Okay, uh, punch out again. So... But I will admit though, right away, we're actually doing quite well so far in regards to the forms of 9 volt stage as it is, despite the fact that we did mess up at one point when it comes to some micro games in that stage. But uh, either way though, I'm sure we'll basically get this just fine. So anyway, let's go and peel this up and try to rescue Olivia. Which by the way, that was actually based off from the beginning scene of uh, Paper Mario the Origami King by the way. Because as far as I'm aware, that Paper Mario the Origami King has also been developed by Intelligent Systems. So it's a cool thing to know when it comes to referencing one of those specific uh, series in general. So anyways, let's move on to level 2 version of Super Mario 64 DS boss micro game and this obviously takes place in Cool Cool Mountain and as a result we're going into the actual frozen slide and cool thing about this though is that much like the forms of how it does it on the original counterparts of uh, Super Mario 64 alongside with the original counterpart of Super Mario 64 DS you can still able to actually activate the shortcut so just in case you don't want to able to actually fell off the course and also why is the forms of those two Wii remotes are doing here? I know it's a little bit strange to be able to actually see those on the Super Mario 64 DS 
uh, graphic standpoint, but either way, it does look pretty cool regardless, and as far as I do know, it did say on the bottom, it did say Wii Motion Plus inside, built in, so yeah, that's as far as I was expecting, especially just like the forms of how it does it back on, uh, uh, let's just say in, uh, 2011 these days, all the way up to the Wii U era, that basically that was about the fact that when it comes to certain Wii remotes, now able to actually contain the Wii Motion Plus built into it, so, oh jeez, ah, we got caught by Young Link himself, ah, oh well, especially concerning about the fact that we now on, uh, level 3 for right now, when it comes to several of micro games as far as this is concerned. But at the, at the very least, we did somehow catch the butterfly, though. And we're going back onto our pilot wings again, except now we need to land on a target, rather than just going through one of those rings. So, yeah, self-explanatory right there. Alright, so love struck again, so I'm guessing we got to find a question mark block again. So, um... Speaking of which though, I did somehow manage to found out there was actually a new Nintendo game is going to be on its way onto the Nintendo Switch, and that game in questioning is going to be a new uh, Famicom Detective Club game, and this time what appears to be Buddy Forms off. Uh, emo. Oh, really? Okay, I'm pretty much useless when it comes to utilizing hand models these days, especially because, I swear, I did manage to try to figure something out with it, but most of the time, again, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't sometimes, so... Oh, this one is from Donkey Kong Jr., and it's even weird with the forms of that 3D model of Donkey Kong Jr. right there, which, again, is a little bit odd. So, and we're going back into Mario Pinball Land again, except we're about to take on Big Boo, and I think that was actually based off from the level, which just takes place in the Newsman Park environment. So, at least as far as I do recall that correctly. Well, mind you, I haven't exactly touched upon... Um, Super Mario Ball for quite some time because let me tell you getting 100% in the game is really really harder as it seems especially because again it's just a pinball thing so to be expected at this point so but uh, anyway uh, when it comes to the new game I was on about earlier basically though there's actually a game called Elmo the Smiling Man uh, Famicom Detective Club is going to be on its way, to be more specifically, in August 29th. So, yeah, that's actually quite interesting when it comes to that particular game's existence. So, but anyways though, uh, let's move on to back on to Wii Play Motion again. And, uh, yeah, everything else goes all, like, pretty cool and everything when it comes to this particular run so far. And back to Dr. Mario again. And now we're on to level 3 variant of Super Mario 64 DS, and my guess is about the fact that we're going on to the final sliding obstacle in that particular boss micro game. And this is obviously based off from Total Mountain, so either way though, definitely without doubt the hardest sliding obstacle throughout the whole entire of that particular mission in uh, Super Mario 64 slash Super Mario 64 DS. So relatively speaking, I was about the fact that, oh, and something's worth noting for, the boss micro game in Super Mario 64 DS does require you to able to perform scales, because as far as I'm aware, we got to able to tilt Mario left and right. So relatively speaking, now everything else will be come to expect. And of course, you can able to actually collect some coins, just like the forms of the regular Super Mario 64, alongside with Super Mario 64 DS as well. Although it does doesn't really do that much, aside from the fact that you can able to collect them for the sake of trying to collecting them. Also, we did somehow jump into the actual Nintendo DS system, which makes sense, especially concerning for the actual graphic models when it comes to Super Mario 64 DS, that we somehow managed to able to jump into the actual Nintendo DS console, which I think we did somehow jump into the bottom screen rather than the top screen. So, yeah, that seems really, really cool and epic at the same time. So, I will say, though, that 9 volt stage is easily the best stage in the whole entire game, just because of Nintendo fanatics such as myself, you see. So, anyway, so now on to the speed up variant where it comes to level 3. Uh, versions of several micro games, and hopefully we should be able to actually get every single micro games in this whole entire stage. I'm hoping for anyway, but uh, that again, though, we'll shall see what happens. And I just realized that particular dog right there did somehow moved. So anyway, we're going back onto uh, the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time 3D again. Except now we somehow succeed, and as a result, we got to avoid a lot of 
uh, boxes and stuff like that. So, anyway. Now, I suppose that was technically the final thing I wanted to mention about in regards of the forms of today's topic at this point. Uh, that particular boss micro game we've already come across into in Dribble and Spin stage, uh, the boss micro game is actually called uh, Rocket Punch. So, yeah, I just want to classify that. Also, I did call that when it comes to likely the, th the level 3 variant of that, you know, with the stacking games balancing kind of stuff. That uh, basically, though, we did somehow got ourselves, uh, let's just say, six copies of uh, what we were in Mega Party games. So, which is basically it's just a multiplayer extended version of the Game Boy Advance game or something. So, uh, anyway, so let's go, let's go and go back on to Donkey Kong Jr. again. So, um,. Yeah, pretty swell, I might add. So, also, I just realized about the fact that recently I've decided able to come back on to playing through uh, Mario Kart Tour for a while. And as a result, I did somehow manage to able to get myself my next Mii Racing suit. And that's what appears to be regular. So, as a result, by that time, I am basically done for now when it comes to buying the forms of, you know... Uh, the me racing suits for now in Mario Kart Tour as long as I do desperately need to able to reach for about uh, 200 drivers as far as for my progression goes, but uh, then again I'll we'll have to wait and see what happens if the actual game decides to able to shut down its services at some point But uh, we shall see so anyways, let's go back onto Super Mario 64 DS again Except now it's gonna get a lot more faster so as a result and it's usually it's gonna take place in level 3 so it makes things a lot more trickier so maybe I'll try my best if I somehow succeed this but if I don't then obviously though I'll be like you know what whatever because obviously though it's just about the fact I just love seeing the forms of those familiar Nintendo uh, references in this uh, you know what we wear move it game as far as I'm concerned actually what really happens if I dare go onto that Oh, it acts like a slant. Okay, so if I go off to the sides of the actual DS system, obviously, though, I just essentially go and fall off. So, I mean, it could be interesting if I dare manage to able to activate those buttons, but either way, though, um, 60 points. So it's actually pretty incredible, especially that is by far the best run we've ever done, especially because, well, relatively speaking, I'm just more familiar with the 9 volt stage as it is, and straight to the point, we've got every single micro games in 9 volt stage. So yeah, that's actually very fantastic. Especially I found it's a little bit weird that in each and every single stage, except the Wario stage as far as I'm aware, each and every single level does manage to contain 21 micro games each, which I found is a little bit odd. But regardless of anything else though, that's as far as I can try to able to explain about the forms of today's topic at one have you. And it looks like we're going on to Remix 2, and much like the forms of how it does it on Remix 1 stage, we are going back into multi-form. So that should be uh, pretty um, interesting to say the least. So uh, anyways though, with that being said folks, is that we get the endings of this point right here. So join me next time for more Flats Play of what we wear move it. And it's that, suffice to say, we can pretty much guarantee about the fact that we'll finish up the main story mode in WarioWare Move It before we move on to bonus content. So this will be fun. And for that particular point, we're going into Remix 2. So I'll see you guys until tomorrow. Later, fellas.